Schaefer Graham. Uh, I'm going to be your speaker, Steve Lane. Uh, we're going to be going through quite a few different things. We're going to be talking about uh, medical marijuana, marijuana itself, some of the risks involved. I uh, also want to direct your attention to some of the resources that are available to you. When you're reviewing this by yourself, please realize that you can expand the notes section at the bottom of each one of these slides, and we've provided supportive documentation for you if you want to further explore this topic. At the very end of the program, I will go through with you on how to do other different types of PowerPoint programs we have available to you. And uh, let us, if we can, Canada grows in the wild or it can be cultivated. We've also got uh, other cannabinoids that are being studied. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration lists marijuana a Schedule One controlled substance and comes into play a little bit later on as far as are we to get into any problems if we are using medical marijuana. Marijuana is the name given to the dried buds and leaves of varieties of the cannabis sativa plant. Those that may be familiar with this, it's also called pot, grass, cannabis, weed, hemp all ones that are listed there for you. But they're all clustered together in what's known as cannabinoids. The two studied components of these are going to be the THC, the tetrahydrocannabinol, and also the cannabidiol, the CBD. So as you get through here, you may find me drifting into the product name rather than the Name of these different uh, chemical constituents. The THC seems to be the cause of the reported high that most people can receive, but they also determined that it can help relieve pain and nausea and reduce inflammation. Please recognize something. Under the Pennsylvania program and other state programs, because Pennsylvania is the 24th state to adopt medical marijuana. The use of the medical marijuana is very often used as an adjunct to other medication. In other words, if pain can't be relieved through other means, medical marijuana may in fact be prescribed. This helps treat the seizures, reduces anxiety and paranoia. It can also counteract the high which is caused by the THC. As we found out here, Christine Clearwater, president of Drug Free Solutions Group, in a National Safety Council webinar, made the following indications. She said that most frequently used illicit drug of abuse in the U.S. is marijuana. When drug detected in workplace testing. In 2014, there were about 6.8 million adults, 13.5 million adults between the ages of 26 and older, through marijuana. The marijuana, however, is quite generally applied to treat the pain, nausea, other side effects of the medical treatments and some disease symptoms. And as you well know that this is going to be determined by your personal physician. It's commonly used by smoking. However, that's not within our state plan and will delineate for you the methods and means by which a person can use medical marijuana. It's referred to as medical cannabis. As we said, it's legal in over half the states in Washington, D.C. In fact, the benefits uh, for adults and children with certain conditions. Things, and this is not an all-encompassing list, but those who have MS, where there's Muscle spasms may also be units. Can associated with chronic pain, nausea, vomiting, and severe wasting. Epilepsy seizure, those people with glaucoma, Crohn's disease, terminal illness, and also HIV or AIDS. We've had other questions come up on the board. Well, about Tourette syndrome, yes, okay. It's been administered to those with those situations. AS, anorexia, 
chronic pain from any condition, uh, the qualifying condition. Search that out if you're going to have that need. There are, as you can well imagine, immediate and long-term possible risks included. In heart rate, blood size, dizziness, impaired concentration and memory, slower reaction times, and negative drug-to-drug -drug interactions. The you that are supervisors who are going to be reviewing this independently, bear slide seven in mind when we involved when we're talking about in-house policies and procedures. Flaws that impact. Well, it's a federally controlled substance that's illegal to sell, possess, or use. Now medical marijuana is legal, as we said, in half the states in D.C., despite the federal ban. The federal government, however, made the following statement. It will not prosecute people who abide by their state's medical marijuana laws. So Pennsylvania law, as you see, which Governor Tom Wolf signed, said Bill 3, in April 17, 2016, this program is probably going to take about 18 to 24 months after signing to go into full implementation. It's going to be administered by the Pennsylvania Department of Health. So as you can well imagine, there are things within that system which are going to have to be thought through and evaluated, everything from licensure of people who are growing the marijuana to be translated into medical marijuana, security on such installations. There's going to have to be licensure on physicians who can, in fact, prescribe medical marijuana for their patients. But 16, it's a marijuana obtained by the certified medical use of Pennsylvania residents with a serious condition limited by statute in Pennsylvania to the following forms. And this is very, very important because people said, are we going to be able to smoke marijuana? Well, smoking is not permissible on a law. There's no use of dry leaf or bud at all. But when you take a look at this, you can have it administered by pill. There's typical forms including gel creams or ointments. Normal, medically appropriate method for administration would be by vaporization or nebulization. And I see this excludes the dry leaf or the plant form. A sidebar comment on this, uh, those of you that are familiar with taking various types of medication outside the realm of medical marijuana can well understand that those are taking pills or may not be at immediate relief and were having inhaled through vaporization or nebulization. That might be the more quicker form, have it assimilated by your system and to gain the relief that you're looking for. There are tinctures and liquid forms that would be available as well. But as we said before, people have said, that, well, is it available now? Well, the implementation of the program, 18 to 24 months from the time of signing, April 2016, and describes how the person obtains a certificate for use for a physician. How the physician will also obtain the ability to issue such certificates. Ulcers which grow and distribute marijuana will also need to be regulated. So that is the reason for the delay of 18 to 24 months for full implementation of the program. In fact, precautions which have to be reviewed. Allergies, if you have an allergy, right? If you're allergic or sensitive to cannabinoids or to plants of the Abyssia family, side effects and warnings. The cannabinoids are like safe when used for, and you'll note the categorization on this, specific conditions at recommended doses for a recommended amount of time. Options. You want to give thought to this if you have got people involved in driving company vehicles, fleet operations, the of alcohol and CBD, 
may cause significantly low blood alcohol levels. There might be an increase in the risk of bleeding. Those who are diabetics, it may affect the blood sugar levels. It makes low blood pressure. And drowsiness or sedation may also occur. So you have to use caution if you're driving or operating heavy equipment or machinery. Other questions? Pregnant and breastfeeding, right here. Some of this information we received, and you'll see at the very end, we've we've put together what I think to be in a pretty well all-encompassing type of bibliography for you. There's an awful lot of good information which was extracted from the mayoclinic.org on this. They want you to avoid using marijuana if you're a woman who's pregnant, breastfeeding, or trying to get pregnant. FDA-approved drugs are two approved drugs with similar benefits as the medical marijuana, Marinol and the pill made from a synthetic form of certain ingredients in the marijuana. You see later on that one lady who gave a presentation for the National Safety Council, their findings were, <clears throat> pardon me, there are probably about 400 different types of chemicals in marijuana itself. Just base products like Cevex are used to treat different types of pain, those cancer or multiple sclerosis. The Food and Drug Administration approved Drona Banal, the Marinol, so being studied. There are also other cannabis type and other types of plants being studied as well to provide the relief that you might be seeking. For the relief of MS symptoms, nerve pain, muscle spasm, urinary disorders, the active ingredients have effects on the central nervous system and immune cells. As we said before, that you find used in, in Pennsylvania are those indicated on the slide for you. Pill form, oil, the goals, gel creams and anointments, and also vaporization or nebulization, and the liquids. So we are going to have this prescribed for you. Your physician working with you is going to be the best source of the best means to treat your somology. In my mouth, as before, though, TC is absorbed poorly. It can take hours to be absorbed. Someone who is in pain, if any of you out there viewers have been in pain and are going to require this type of prescription or prescribed medication, wow, you are seeking a more immediate relief. The inhaled version, as you see, it enters the bloodstream and goes to the brain quickly. The second psychoactive compound, first in small amounts, and a less effect, but the effects of inhaled marijuana fade faster than marijuana taken by mouth. Approved cannabis drugs, as you can see right here, they've been in the U.S. for medical use, the dronabinol and the nabalone. The dronabinol, the marinol, it's a pharmaceutical form of the THC, and a gelatin capsule containing the THC. That's approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for the treatment of the nausea and vomiting caused by cancer chemotherapy, as well as weight loss and poor appetite in patients with AIDS. Dronabol can be for reducing that nausea. It's also found to help improve food intake and weight loss in patients with HIV of cancer patients, though, it wasn't better than placebo or another drug. Vixols provide some help with cancer pain, but not found helpful in every study. So as you can see, the group study being researched, right, realized that there are, is still quite a bit amount of research that's required to determine what the positives and negatives be for each type of drug. Again, synthetic cannabinoid, 
cannabinoid, much like the THC. It's skin by mouth. Also, it treats nausea and vomiting, and it's used for cancer therapy. Proved to treat some conditions as well. Nimicol, the drug still under study in the U.S. Mouth spray, whole plant extract with the TC and the CBD. Almost one to one mix. It's used to treat muscle spasms and pain from S. And symptoms that are relieved, if it were in fact smoked, which we don't do that under our, our Pennsylvania program. It's been found helpful in treating nausea and vomiting from cancer chemotherapy. If it's held, smoked, or vaporized, of course, we'd be admitting in Pennsylvania the vaporized or nebulized form. It's a helpful treatment of neuropathic pain that caused by damaged nerves. Smoke marijuana has also helped improve food intake in HIV patients in the numerous studies being conducted. The effects of the cannabinoids, there's an increased heart rate, blood pressure, dizziness or lightheadedness, and fainting. Healthiness, mood changes, a feeling of being high, they can so worsen depression, mania, or other mental illnesses. So bear that in mind when you're starting your policies. Given to how such conditions may affect the safety in the workplace, we'll we'll discuss that at length as well. The Cancer Society, as you can well imagine, is wholeheartedly behind the research and the administration of the marijuana. They see a definitive need for the use of cannabinoids in cancer patients. The other thing they've also recognized that by classifying the material as a Schedule I controlled substance by SDEA, it perhaps imposes numerous conditions on researchers and may in fact deter scientific study of the material itself. So as an employer, the things that you need to know, employees with a license should be treated like any other employee with prescription medication that could affect their ability to carry out their duties of employment. This is going to be very important for you as far as non-discrimination. And we'll take a look at some of the more salient points that would be involved in your policies. The principles around duty to accommodate will fact by but it doesn't mean allowing an employee to carry out his or her duties while they are, in fact, impaired. The employee must carry out its health and safety due diligence at the same time it's into accommodating that employee who may be using medical marijuana. marijuana. Uh, the things as far as the PL does allow employees to prohibit employees from doing any of the following while under the influence of the marijuana. Operating or controlling government-regulated chemicals or high-voltage electricity. For duties at heights or in fine spaces, including mining. For any tasks that threaten their own life or the lives of co-workers. Those safety-sensitive positions, it might mean the resigning of such an employee to an unsafety-sensitive position. Employers can set limits. If the employee says they need to smoke on the job, this should not be happening in Pennsylvania. This would be applicable to other states which permit the smoking of the marijuana. Proactive actions. You've got to re-examine the workplace drug and alcohol policies. Focus your prescription and non-prescription medication segments that are involved. And... As we take a look at this, as you well understand, there's nothing which proves the inclusion of your legal assistance that you have available to you. They're going to have to go through and review the policies. Proactive actions, 
they require an employee drug prescription disclosure, which may impair their safe work performance. And it also would prohibit employees in safety-sensitive positions from working while impaired. Pro actions are going to set a process for obtaining the additional medical information to facilitate the accommodation. And they want to get involved in the accommodation and proceed construction process. The employer, the employee, the union, there's so, as you'll see a little bit later on, the need to include a physician or a physician. Your policy will identify restrictions on the use of medical marijuana in the workplace or and when. I type breaches of the policy and the discipline would he carry it out. Should advise employees and candidates that medical opinions will be required prior to the workers taking on safety sensitive work. But your medical department comes into play. If you not have a medical department, you want to seek guidance. Perhaps you want to take on a medical organization in a consulting basis. But they're going to help you in the structuring your policies. How are you going to be treating medical marijuana cases? The medical professional will understand the possible effects of its use. And so the, the workplace safety considerations. So include them in the creation of your guidelines. The health physician, as you can see, is going to act as the lead on between your organization and the employee's family doctor. They want to best understand the condition that's been prescribed for, the dosage, dosage, the side effects, and they want to provide the expert advice and support in helping your drug and alcohol policy, especially when dealing with potentially complex cases. So the department will set the means to obtain additional medical information to facilitate such accommodation. Questions about <clears throat> pardon me, work plug testing. There are things that are involved, right? right? The drug testing naturally is to promote safety. It is required for safety sensitive positions. To develop a clear drug and alcohol policy to maintain a safe working environment and limit legal liability. <clears throat> Forward me. We also call into question non-discrimination. Employees who are registered marijuana patients can generally only be terminated for using it if the user possesses the marijuana while they're at the work or if they come to work under the influence. So important things to be mindful of. should be reviewed because those regarding drug testing are important and how it can be accomplished. And these have been really updated. You'll see right below there, August 10, 2016, a new rule prohibits mandatory post-accident drug testing. Such tests discriminate against employees on the basis of injury and is reported. Now, one of the things that they cited in the information was uh, somebody somebody stubbed their toe out of the work area. Well, we got to drug test them. Somebody got a paper cut. Well, we got to drug test them. There are certain rubrics which in, within which drug testing would be applicable. They're going to be outside the veil, all right? right? The place or the workplace drug testing is thought of as being an anti-discrimination, anti-retaliation rule. You cannot treat medical marijuana users differently if rule law or regulations require you to do. If federally regulated jobs like commercial drivers or pilots can be terminated or never even hired if they fail a drug test, even if they're legal medical marijuana users. Another exception, employees can still maintain a sober 
work environment. So what you have here on these sales for consideration, hand side you want to promote and provide this accommodation for the person who really, really needs the medical marijuana. And on the right hand scale, the onus is on the employer to provide a as a work environment as possible. So policies are going to deal with is registered as medical marijuana patients. And as you see right here, these would be reasons that they may in fact be medical marijuana patients. Cancer produces severe pain, nausea, or wasting. They be prescribed for their use. Gloma, HIV, Tourette's, right? AS. Uh, if subject to seizures, including epilepsy, suffering severe and persistent muscle spasms, including MS. Disease would be another reason for them using medical marijuana. And got a terminal illness with a probable life expectancy of under one year if the illness causes severe pain, nausea, or wasting. Marijuana is a mind-altering drug, as we said before. And see right here, it has determined to contain more than 400 chemicals, according to the Drug Enforcement Administration. So, those in a safety-sensitive position they can be posed both short and long-term. All potency levels may not be known, or they in fact have adverse effects. Employers versus workers' rights concern. If the employer can provide the worker impaired on the job or prove that they're impaired on the job, then the employer can take action regardless of the residing state. There's no impairment, but they test positive. Does the employer have the right to fire that worker as part of its drug-free workplace policy? They reached out on this. And they into a case, Colorado's Coats versus the Dish Network. Plaintiff in the case, a quadriplegic was licensed to take medical marijuana. After he failed a drug test, Dish Network fired him from his job as a customer service representative. The plaintiff sued the company, but the state's court of appeals sided with Dish Network. The time of us including it in this program, the case was pending in the Colorado Supreme Court. Some states, judges have ruled on the side of the employers recognizing the stringent requirement and possible impact on coworkers and on the individual who might be impaired and to maintain as safe a workplace as possible. As you can see, the Director of Environmental Health and Safety, Roy Anderson Corporation out of Gulfport, the laws vary. If still have to write to enforce drug-free workplace policies and dismiss workers if they can prove impairment on the drug job. This is what experts are saying. In Clearwater, President of Drug-Free Solutions Group in a National Safety Council webinar, came up with other interesting information you should consider when drawing up your policy. Marijuana is 10 to 20 times stronger today than it was in the 60s and the 70s. HC component affects depth perception, reaction time, coordination, other motor skills, and may create three distortion. So tested positive had a 55% more industrial accidents, 80% more injuries, and 75% more absenteeism come to those who tested negative. As from the studies is also that this is an addictive drug. They've got people who are driving, as we said, fleet operations, vehicles, 
car crashes involving marijuana increased 300 percent between 2010 and 2013, and they continue to be on the rise. They found decreased productivity. Work up and unemployment comp claims were increased. The turnover of people, lawsuits, and also by Christine's evasion. The employer could expect to pay about $7,000 a year on an employee who uses drugs. And a corollary on that was about one in six has a substance abuse problem for your employees. The example that you used here, a company with 500 employees, the expenditure would be about $600,000 a year. The Americans with Disability Act sides with the employer regarding medical marijuana. This is interesting as well. Most states will not pay workers' comp to an employee under the influence at the time of an incident. And most health insurance programs will not pay for medical marijuana. So for your policy, manage training has to be given to managers morally to enforce the policy. There has access to support for employees with drug problems, whether medical marijuana or not. Formal assistance or referral to local resources. The clearly defined use and possession meanings for your employees. This is going to be scripted into your policies manual. Establish rules for post accident testing when to be non discriminatory. Your Kate, how you will handle an employee's conviction or arrest. So you can see now you're outside the box, you're outside the envelope. You're going to need to script something and have legal assistance in doing it. Now, I'm going to only look in my crystal ball and assume or presume that when the whole program for Pennsylvania is into place, there will probably be some type of a sample or a template that can be adopted by the employer, which in view to take into account all of the do's and don'ts and ins and outs. So policy, it's going to be supported by workplace procedures. The specificity in this to reduce the chances of litigation. The assurance of compliance with federal and state laws as well as other regulations which are going to pertain. If you have people who fall under DOT, you look at those regulations. You have people who fall under Americans with Disability Acts. You have to check into that. If you have a federal contract, you have to see what the federal contract requirements per or exclude. But the line is whatever you come up with, or as you are drawing it up, up is going to have to ultimately be reviewed by your company's legal counsel. Sorry, marijuana has the potential to relieve pain for a variety of medical conditions. The workplace has the potential for safety issues, which we have discussed, into creating workplace policies which address the parameters for use, as well as those things which cannot be accepted. Be support by the workplace procedures and there be an insurance of compliance with the federal state laws as well as all of the other regulations which may pertain. So have your legal representation review all your program aspects. It may be outside the scope of your workplace safety committee. You may want to have the workplace safety committee involved. You may want to create a special committee to develop your policy for your company. Additional information for you, I'll show you some of the 
other information that you can contact us for. You can the contact information there. Safety at R A L I B W C Paths at P A dot G dot I'm sorry. We are we're up from seventy free PowerPoints to about hundred and eighty four. And uh we would also like you to contact that which is shown to a copy of the new safety topics list. I think you might be greatly surprised to offer. Photography right here. As you see, a lot of information from Med Clinic. If you have got other questions regarding other materials, Mayo Clinic I found to be an excellent source. The information, other suggested programs, which may run the training here. If you're a safety trainer at your own organization, we got a drug and alcohol awareness program for the employee. We also have the drug and alcohol awareness for supervisors and opioid addiction as well. So please contact us. Let us know what you need, how to provide the service for you. And let us know.